in this video we're going to talk about uh, radical chain reactions uh, with the main focus of the video coming towards the end being uh, how to determine the percent uh, yield or product distribution for a radical chain reaction on a, um, a carbon chain that's more than uh, two carbons so uh, let's go and look at again what we've already discussed and what we already know that every uh, radical chain reaction undergoes three steps uh, in the mechanism initiation propagation and termination and then this reaction is uh, just a radical substitution of methane with chlorine uh, you need to uh, have do this in the presence of light in order to uh, cause the initiation to happen propagation is when the initiator form uh, here comes into uh, the propagation step and extracts a hydrogen um, from methane to give me a methyl radical and HCl and then termination is when those uh, radicals combine uh, to give you your products so we've already discussed this this is in uh, the Pac-Man radicals video if you want to go back and look at that so the question is what happens when the chain is extended well obviously if there are more carbons and more abstractable hydrogens then you would expect that you would get more uh, products in that radical chain reaction mechanism uh, in the termination step of that mechanism and so if we look at uh, propane here right we can see that it's, that's a three carbon chain uh, you have two uh, hydrogens here in the middle and then the two terminal sets of hydrogens are identical if we brominate this using bromine in the presence of light see that we get two products the question is which one of those products is major or which one is formed in the highest amount and there's a way to find that out um, but in order to and before we can before we apply any um, formula or any type of th anything like that we can predict based on the stability of the radical All right so in the propagation steps for this particular reaction we can see that bromine is going to abstract here creating a secondary radical and then bromine is going to abstract here creating a primary radical all right so the question is which one of those two radicals is more stable and that's going to determine which one gets formed the fastest all right so radical stability matches that of carbocation stability in that a primary uh, radical well actually a methyl radical is going to be your least stable but the primary uh, radical is going to be a lot less stable than a secondary and a tertiary so radicals follow the same trend as uh, carbocation so a primary radical like we have here is going to be less stable than the secondary radical that we have here and because of that uh, decrease in stability it's a lot harder to break uh, this CH bond in propagation and so the secondary radical is going to be formed much faster and as a rule of thumb uh, more stable radicals form faster and that's just a simple rule of thumb and the way you determine the stability is based on the substitution pattern Pr methyl is the least stable and then primary is the uh, primary and then it goes primary secondary and tertiary the tertiary being the most stable so in order to determine empirically determine uh, the product distribution we need a couple of things number one we need the reactivity factor and since bromine and chlorine are really the only halogens that we're going to discuss reactivity wise with these radical chain reactions um, we need to look at what the reactivity factor is for those and the reactivity factor just says the uh, just gives the likelihood of bromine abstracting uh, hydrogen on a particular type of carbon so over here the type of carbon will be primary secondary or tertiary and then for bromine you can see that for tertiary bromine is highly reactive and then with chlorine it's a little less selective um, as far as which types of proton um, I'm sorry not protons which types of hydrogens uh, chlorine likes to abstract and so you can see here there's not much difference between um, abstracting a secondary and a tertiary uh, based on the reactivity factor so chlorine is a lot more reactive and less selective whereas bromine is a lot less reactive and more selective so let's look at this and we needed one more piece of information and that is we need the, this formula here which helps us to determine the percentage of the product right so here's our reaction here's propane it's being brominated uh, through a radical uh, substitution okay so when we look at the two products we have the uh, bromine on the secondary carbon and then bromine here on a primary carbon 
so this formula helps us to determine the product distribution empirically so the, this is the number and uh, the type of hydrogen that's NH right here and then R is my reactivity factor and then in the denominator that's just the sum of NH and R for each type of hydrogen so let's let's put this into practice alright so let's calculate uh, the percentage of this uh, of this compound 2-bromopropane where the secondary hydrogen gets abstracted so here we have two secondary hydrogens we have six primary hydrogens and so let's do the percentage of 2-bromopropane where we just plug in these numbers the reactivity factor for bromine at a secondary site is 82 we have two secondary hydrogens and then uh, in the denominator we just take the sum of the number of hydrogens times the reactivity factor alright so that's 2 times 82 again and then we have 6 primary hydrogens and so that's 6 times 1 because the reactivity factor for primary hydrogens based on the table that I just showed you is 1 so we see that this is formed in 96.5 percent yield meaning that the other uh, product 1-bromopropane uh, we make in 3.5 percent yield so the way to approach these problems is to number one look at the chain and locate each type of hydrogen in other words every hydrogen that's not identical is a possible site for abstraction and a possible site uh, for a radical to be formed and then uh, those radicals that are formed in, prop in propagation are taken into termination and then terminated so if you look at each type of hydrogen um, the ones that are not identical those are abstractable sites um, and if hydrogens are identical we count them all together when we uh, plug those numbers into uh, the formula that I just showed you and then determine the reactivity factor this is on a table I'll probably give you this table on the exam and then we just apply the formula to determine the percentages so let's look at this compound here we have uh, three methyl pentane and you can see that there are four sites for potential abstraction so uh, this site which is identical to this site that's why they're the same color and then this secondary site which is identical to here the tertiary site here in the middle and then these um, this methyl this set of methyl hydrogens here which are different from the rest of these hydrogens so you have four potential sites for abstraction and so when we react this with chlorine in the presence of light we get four different products Right, one with the chlorine at the tertiary site, one here on the uh, primary hydrogens here, uh, where one of the primary hydrogens has been removed, one here where a primary hydrogen has been removed, and then one here where the secondary hydrogen has been removed. So the question is, what is the product distribution? How do we calculate the amount of the, uh, each monochlorinated product that we form? And monochlorinated is very simple. It just means that one chlorine has been substituted for one hydrogen. So let's look at it. So here's the formula. Here's the reactivity factor. Again, it's one for primary carbons. Uh, it's 3.9 for secondary carbons. And then it's 5.2 for tertiary carbons. So if we look at our start material, 3 uh, methyl pentane, we can see that we have six primary hydrogens here that are in red. We have three here that are in blue. We have four secondary hydrogens or types of hydrogens here. And then the green hydrogen here uh, is uh, there's one tertiary hydrogen. All right, so let's just do the calculation for the tertiary hydrogen. Remember, this is the reactivity factor. We need that. And we also need this formula here. Um, and then we've already determined the number of different types of hydrogen. So if we do for tertiary, we just plug these numbers in. Uh, 5.2 is the reactivity um, factor for tertiary hydrogen and then uh, we have one of those so that goes here in this formula where NHI is and then the bottom would just be the sum this is uh, for tertiary uh, the, this is secondary and these two here would correspond to the two sets of primary hydrogens. Once the, the thing is about this calculation is once you calculate the denominator once, all you have to do in subsequent calculations to determine the other uh, percent yields for the other products is to keep the denominator the same and then just change the numerator 
because the reactivity factor is going to change as well as the number of hydrogen so now it's your turn to do some work and I'll take this as homework uh, when you turn this in for the with the um, on the day of the exam so here number one pop quiz calculate the rest of the product percentages from 3-methyl pentane which we just did and then also here's another question here calculate the product distribution for monochlorinated products for the reaction of pentane with chlorine under radical chain reaction conditions alright so I'll take these on the day of the exam as always if you have any questions you can tweet you can email or you can drop by my office peace